Good evening, culture lovers. Oi, oi, and welcome to Bushel on the Box, the show that's driven by truth, honesty, and the beautiful dream of one day being saddled and ridden by a crop wielding cowboy carter. I'm Gary Bushel, and a lot happened while I was away. Turns out the Thames is full of more crap than the daytime TV schedules. The SNP's useless USAF is turning Scotland into a 1984 tribute act, and the BBC finally admitted it was biased but only in its weather forecasts. They confessed that they always use the gloomiest possible interpretations on their weather app, just like they do on their news reports, their dramas, their melodramas, and their comedy bookings. The nightly news reported that ministers are ready to step in at Thames Water. Let's hope they're wearing waders. On Good Morning Britain, Professor Alex Ford revealed that raw sewage dumped into the channel contains traces of illegal drugs, and every single marine species they examine is coked up to the gills. That's the thing with fish, they can't stop getting hooked. I'd like to see the knock-on effects on MasterChef. Cod a la Charlie washed down with an Escobar eggnog, and Greg sorted for eels and whiz. At least we'll know what the addict's smoking. I'm guessing Siamese fighting fish must be on angel dust. I really want you to love this town. It's set in Coventry and Birmingham in the summer of 1981, at the tail end of the glorious two-tone era. The show even takes its title from the opening line of the specials number one, Ghost Town. This town is coming like a ghost town, although this is more a case of these viewers are becoming like ghost viewers. Between episodes one and two, ratings went down like a fat kid on a go-kart. Frankly, I'm not surprised. It was slow, meandering, clunkily written and hard to take seriously. I've seen the first two episodes now, and bizarrely, there wasn't any two-tone music on the soundtrack at all. No specials, no selector, no beat. Instead, Barden, a Coventry kid with an IRA terrorist for a dad, tries to drown out his father's rebel song by singing Desmond Decker's You Can Get It If You Really Want, a brilliant hit from 1970, when he would have been about seven. We get a lot of reggae and original ska, including Prince Buster from 1968, but not a bar of madness or bad manners. What's all that about? The Coventry Brigade of the IRA bombed the railway station in episode two, something that did actually happen in 1939, when we were on the cusp of war with Nazi Germany and the IRA were getting in bed with Hitler. No Provo bombs were detonated in Coventry or in Birmingham in 1981. But then history was never showrunner Stephen Knight's strong suit. In Peaky Blinders, he had Oswald Mosley as a fascist when he was actually a Labour MP. 1981 was a summer of riots and looting, but we don't see it from the point of view of some poor hard-working shopkeeper who's just witnessed his family business go up in flames. You try and nick a telly in 1978, it took three of you to lift it and two to change channels. One had to move the aerial. I never understood the far left stance of supporting the provost critically but unconditionally. What would they say to a teenage car mechanic with half his leg blown off? Well, we're critical of how this happened, mate, but we still support the scumbags who did it. Come on the next troops out march. Bring your wheelchair, I'll push. Brothers Dante and Gregory, Barden's cousins, are well played, but it was hard to believe in either of them. Dreamer Dante, a piss poor poet, is absurdly naive. He'd never heard of Birmingham City Zulu Warriors, he didn't know what a rude boy was, but suddenly he turns into John Wick when a skinhead nicks his pork pie hat. Even harder to credit, Army Sergeant Gregory leaves his armoured car listening to birdsong in the middle of hostile Belfast and urges Catholics and Protestants to sing together. Instead of songs, he gets whistling bullets. Back home, their worried nan tells a Catholic priest her concerns about Bardi being dragged into the IRA and gets a visit from a grim-faced Provo Doris who pins a poster of hunger striker Bobby Sands on her wall. She dies not long after. Politics were murkier than Angela Rayner's property dealings back then, but there's no sign here of the widespread and understandable anti-IRA feeling that existed in the Midlands. 
21 working class kids were killed and 100 injured in the Birmingham pub bombings of 1974. People hadn't forgotten the BBC have. Dante is trying to form a ska band with Eve Austin's Genie and Barden, who was last seen hitchhiking to London to escape his Fenian father. Dad is separated from his mum, Lady Mary from Downton Abbey, aka Michelle Dockery, who plays Estella as the best singing drunk since Dean Martin. She's gone from aloof to a lush. Sadly, no one sings, Michelle's mad at me. It's all very well seeing petrol bombs and worse through rose-tinted glasses, but where's the joy that was at the heart of Two-Tone? I'll stick with it, but so far, it's a case of too much, too wrong. If TV cameras put on £10, why is Alison Hammond still eating them? I like Alison, but I feel sorry for her. She'll never know what a breeze feels like between her thighs. Now the BBC axed its traditional Easter service from King's College and had a confirmed atheist on Desert Island Discs for a Good Friday. Lord Reef must be spinning in his tin. On their own, these are small niggles, but put in context of everything else that's happening, and it's disturbing. We had Ramadan lights on display in central London over Easter. Hot cross buns sold with a tick instead of a cross. My mate's bosses told him and his co-workers they should try fasting over Ramadan. <laughs> Multiculturalism has come to mean majority culture and beliefs must be undermined, mocked or marginalised, while minority cultures and customs are encouraged and given protected status. What we're seeing is the slow, steady erosion of our identity. The powers that be want us to be ashamed of our heritage, our history and our achievements. Still, I'm sure that will be reversed when the BBC devote a whole night of celebrations to St George's Day on April the 23rd. <coughs> oh, wait. Time for more mysteries and questions. Is Shania Twain's sister called Choo Choo? What do you plant if you want to grow seedless grapes? And why oh why have the BBC cancelled Motherland, one of its few half decent comedies? Could it be that one of the show's co-creators is Graham Linehan, who co-created Father Ted, and is now a non-person for the heinous crime of having a different opinion from the fashionable herd? If you're worried about how much time you spend online, should you Google it? My wife says I spend too much time on Facebook, so I blocked her. Here's a quick goof from auctioneer Tim Weeks on Bargain Hunt. As he was checking his computer for bids last week, he said, I can see you flashing away online. And there was me thinking they just banged up that cyber flasher. Oi oi, that's your lot. We'll be back soon. In the meantime, here's some sober political commentary on the London Merrill battle from the Rawhides UK. Cheerio. I can't stand. I can't stand cunts. I can't stand. I can't stand cunts. Nipple high Napoleon, too big for his boots. Sworn off dictator, soon forgot his roots. Let's vote him out, start the round. He's a useless cunt. I can't stand. I can't stand cunts. I can't stand. I can't stand cunts. Says he is for labour, but persecutes the poor. If you are a worker, he's good.